So here we are, section three, biological and physical sciences. Today, I'm here to finish off this little mini series that we've been talking about. Essentially, it is the third episode in a three part mini series talking about time management in each individual section of the GAMSAT. So if you haven't checked out my other videos on this series, please jump through the channel, have a look through them because I'm sure they'll be of great value to you. Hey friends, how are we doing? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Harry and I'm a third year paramedic student studying at Victoria University in Australia. Also want to get into med next year, so hopefully that all goes well. All right, so let's just jump straight into it then, shall we? In this section, we have 150 minutes to answer 75 questions. So if you break that down, that brings it to roughly about two minutes a question. And if you think about that, that's actually a pretty big chunk of time considering that for most of the questions, there's actually one big piece of info and then about four or five questions pertaining to that info. So if we say that say three or four of those questions all refers to that bulk original piece of information and then the last two questions alter the stem in some way so you have to think a little bit more about it, it works out that you've got a lot more time to answer each question because you only have to read that initial stem and information once. Now I know the natural reaction for starting section three after you finish section one, you've just slammed through section two, the last thing you wanna do is come and sit down for another, what, two and a half hours. So you're naturally just gonna be all buzzed up and you're just gonna wanna run through, skim through those questions and go bam, 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 bam. But you don't have to do that. Like hopefully you've had your break or you would have had your break, but hopefully in your break, You've sat down, you've taken a deep breath and you've really composed yourself. You've had something to eat, you've had some big carbs, a bit of energy, maybe a bit of sugar just to click you back into gear a little bit. And you've got yourself all refreshed, all pumped up and ready to tackle this section calmly and methodically. Ideally in a section three, it would be great to be able to use that reading time to really sift through a couple of those earlier questions, have a look through them and find what you do know and what you absolutely don't know. Mark the ones you do know so you can jump straight to them when writing time starts and just go bang a bang and smash it out, tick it off and then move on. And it'll save you a little bit of time down the track because you don't have to think so much. You don't have to look at all those questions that you know you're not gonna be good at when you've already, you've already sorted through them in your reading time, you can just give them a move ahead. However, because there is no actual reading time anymore, you can't sift through it. So my advice or what I generally do is use this time just to go through the questions like normal. Just start it as you would, just utilize that extra, well, I think it's five minutes reading time. Just use that extra time just to answer some questions. Maybe it'll give you a little bit of more of a leeway, but if you encounter a hard question early and you feel like, yeah, I wanna dedicate a couple minutes extra just to this question to see if I can nut it out nice and early. If you still wanna go and sift through the questions early and just kind of do maybe like the first 10 questions or so, and just try and go through and see if you can just kind of still follow that same little sorting process that you would in the reading time, go for it. However, in saying that, because it's all digital and based on the way that the GAMSAT test in the program is actually set out, it's a little bit finicky and you can't really like visualize super clearly where your questions are and where you've come from and you kind of got to click through to find the questions and stuff on the little tab up the top. So. I mean, you could, but I feel like it's a little finicky and you might not be utilizing your time as well as you could be. And as we know, GAMSAT, all about utilizing time as best you can. So the method to managing your time throughout section three is actually really similar to section one. You just wanna look at your answers, see what they're looking for, and then use that knowledge to go into the STEM and then find clues to help you answer the question. I like to think of it a little bit like baking a cake. You're not gonna look at the recipe for the cake and go, okay, that's how you make it, great. And then just jump in and start making it. Cause you're gonna get halfway through and go, oh my God, I don't have flour or you know, I don't have eggs or we're out of sugar. And then you're all over the shop, you pause, you kind of break down, have a little bit of a cry. And then you run to the supermarket, get what you need, come back and make the cake. And that's great. The cake's made, but it took you probably about an hour, an hour and a half longer than it should have. So what you do instead is you look at what you have in the pantry and you go, great, tick, tick, tick. I've got my flour, I've got, I've got my, you know, my icing sugar, but you go, mm, no eggs, no sugar. Go, okay, what does the recipe need? Ah, uh, eggs, sugar, ha. <laughs> go to the supermarket, get it, come back, then make the cake. It's done that much quicker, that much easier and then you get to enjoy a yummy cake afterwards. 
Hmm. Thinking about that, maybe that isn't really the best analogy, but whatever. Whatever. Maybe, maybe it's really good. I'm not sure. Why are we are talking about sifting through questions and kind of eliminating ones to come back to later? If you do come across a question that you are just totally stumped on, you just have absolutely no idea how to answer it, or maybe you do, but you just know you're going to need a little bit of time to really think about it, write it down in your scrap piece of paper and move on. Come back to it later because you just don't have the time to try and sort out a question for six, seven minutes in the middle of an exam. You, we just don't have the time. Mm. Now, I really don't like saying this as well because I know you're all great and you're all gonna pass it and you're all gonna ace and you're gonna get into medicine and you're all gonna finish section three. But I do know that section three is a little tricky for some people to get through. It's pretty hard and it is pretty time pressured if you start to get bogged down on a couple of really tricky questions. So what I can say is that if you are feeling like you're not gonna finish the test, just start guessing. Just choose a, choose a letter and just go, circle them away, okay? Because you don't get penalized for wrong marks and finishing the test, even if you have guessed questions, is much better than not finishing the test at all. Because you might get lucky and you might snag a couple extra marks. Now, in regards to talking about what we can do leading up to the exam to really help ourselves manage our time more efficiently is this is something that I didn't really pick up on or didn't really find out or clue on about until my study of the second GAMSAT that I sat. So I was probably a month, a month, maybe two months away from studying my second GAMSAT. Oh, not studying, but sitting my second GAMSAT. And it's the idea that close enough is good enough. Now what that means is that in your calculations, for whatever you have to calculate, the answers are gonna be spaced out then there's usually going to be one or two that look the same out of all four of the questions, so they'll be paired roughly. And I know this probably goes against all of your intuition that you've been taught in maths your whole life, but essentially, after you've done your calculation, if it's not exactly pinpoint to one of the answers, then whichever one is close enough is good enough. And that mainly stems from the logic in the fact that you've probably done the maths correctly leading up to the answer. You just might have, you know, maybe you didn't quite get a decimal place right, or maybe you miscalculated an exponent and it's brought you down and you've got the same number, but maybe the exponent's wrong or the exponent's right, but the number is wrong. And so you can kind of, you know, use a little bit of your intuition, a little bit of your logic to kind of extrapolate to that and find that, hey, I know I've done this all pretty correct. Maybe I've missed a number, but that is exactly what mine would be if, well, you, know, you think that would be mine if I had have done it correctly. And so you simply, you, you, you just estimate and go, yeah, look, that's probably it. Circle it, move on. Another reason that this is actually a pretty important thing to wrap your head around as well, is that throughout the exam, you're going to be rounding numbers all the time. So if you're getting a number that's like, what, eight point, seven, six, four or something, you're not gonna then times that by like 12, right? You're gonna go 8.7, okay, well, I'm gonna round that up to nine, and then it's nine times 12, and that's what? Nine times 12, 90, 99, 108. Yeah, 100, 108, I think. Fact check me on that one. This all comes down to that same key principle in that we just don't have enough time to sit there, work through a question, find an answer, go, mm, it's pretty close to that one. Mm, it's not really that close to any of the others. Like, I feel like it's probably that, but it's not correct. So I'm gonna redo the whole question. I'm gonna redo all my calculations to try and figure it out. Because we just don't have the time. Close enough, good enough, circle it, move on. The resource that really clued me into this way of thinking and kind of started to develop that concept into my mind was Layer for Size YouTube channel and website. Now I'll pop them down in the description because I really think if you guys are studying for the section three, that you should definitely give it a look. She completely blew my mind with a lot of these little scientific little tricks and little tips that you can do with maths just to speed up the process a little bit. She's got a good thing on Punnett squares as well. You know, really helpful in like kind of changing significant figures and things like that, just to make it a little bit easier so you can kind of accelerate that calculation process to yeah, eventually get to an answer that's close enough so you can circle it and move on. If you haven't already, 
feel free to check out my section three games app preparation video as well, where I kind of talk about what's usually on the exam and how best to appropriately prepare yourself for them. And lucky last, honestly, the last thing that I can really say is just practice. Practice, 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 okay? Learn your math rules and learn your critical thinking and develop your critical thinking skills. If you're proficient in your critical thinking and you know your math skills and everything, naturally, that's gonna save you time in the exam because it's less you have to think about and try and work it out in your head. Cool, so thanks for stopping by everyone. I hope you got something out of this video. That brings this little mini series really to an end, to a conclusion. Hurrah, all done. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you want, if you enjoyed this content and if you want to see more of this content. That way you won't miss out when I post the video next. Leave a comment down below about how you're preparing for the game site, your time management skills, anything to do with your medicine process or medicine in general or just anything at all. And I'll pop down and give it a look. All right, till next time guys. See ya.